Hey guys, this is going to be a crash course on Markdown. And I know that if you've been a web developer for a while, you probably already know Markdown, or at least some of the syntax, if you use GitHub and, and you commit readme files and so on. But I wanted to make a crash course on it because it's something that everyone should know, and you can literally learn the syntax in less than an hour. So this is going to be for beginners as well as for people that have used Markdown but may not know the entire syntax and what you can do with it. So we'll talk about what it is, what it's used for, and then we'll jump into VS Code with the Markdown Preview extension, and we'll create kind of a cheat sheet that you can use for future reference. All right, so let's get into it. Coding Dojo is a programming school that turns beginners into developers in only 14 weeks. Over 90% of their grads land jobs within three months of graduating, often making over 70K per year. To learn more, visit CodingDojo.com or click the link in the description below. So what exactly is Markdown? It's a lightweight markup language with a plain text formatting syntax. So like HTML, it's a markup language, but we don't use tags or anything like that. It's a very readable syntax, and it can be converted into HTML, XHTML, as well as other formats. And its main purpose is readability. The creators of Markdown basically wanted the documents to look like as is plain text documents without any HTML tags or anything like that. So kind of what you see is what you get. You put a space in the document, it reflects a space, no need for a, a BR tag and so on. Markdown kind of keeps that positioning in place. All right, then you can use certain characters or punctuation marks to format stuff to make it bold or italic. You can create lists, things like that. And we're going to take a look at all of that stuff in a little bit. So what is Markdown actually used for? It's widely used for readme files and documentation. Markdown is heavily used by GitHub. When you go to a repository page and you see all that documentation that's underneath the, the um, the application file structure that's usually written in markdown in fact all you have to do when pushing your code to a repository is create a file called readme.md markdown uses md as a file extension it will automatically display on the in the github repository okay it's also used for things like forum posts blog posts things like that pieces of content on websites and applications um, it's also used quite a bit with static site generators. That's one of the reasons that I'm doing this crash course. One of the reasons I got the idea for it is because I'm looking into Gatsby right now, which is a static site generator that uses React. But you can also create blog posts using um, a few Gatsby plugins and markdown files. Okay, so I was working on that and that gave me the idea to kind of do a little crash course on markdown itself. So here's some of the basic types of formatting that you can do with core markdown. So headings, uh, lists, emphasis like bold and italic, uh, links, you can create links, you can create blocks of code, you can have images displayed, block quotes, horizontal rules, things like that. Now, there's also basically extensions to markdown like um, with PHP markdown, there's an extension you can use GitHub itself has its own special flavor of Markdown where you can add things like tables, um, task lists, things like that. And we're going to take a look at some of that stuff as well. So it's going to be kind of an extended tutorial. Now, as far as uh, writing Markdown, you can write it in any text editor, but it's really nice to have something that gives you like a preview of what it's going to look like. So uh, what, I, what I use is VS Code, uh, Visual Studio Code, and I use a, an extension called Auto Open Markdown Previewer. And that's, that's what I use, but you can also use other extensions for VS Code, and then of course other text editors like Atom, Sublime Text, they also have Markdown extensions or plugins you can use. That's what I would recommend, but then you also have uh, editors that were actually created for Markdown, so MarkPad, HaruPad, Markdown Pad 2, Typora, uh, these were all created for writing Markdown. And I can't really say much about them. I haven't used them. I know some are free, some aren't. Some have free versions and some have premium versions. But uh, in all honesty, I would just suggest using a text editor with an extension. Uh, but it's up to you, okay? But we'll be using VS Code with, with one of the extensions. 
All right, so there's not really much more to, to say about what Markdown is. It's pretty simple. It's just a very lightweight markup language. So let's get into it and let's create a cheat sheet so that you guys can have it for future reference and you can use it to whatever, create readme files or create blog posts, things like that. All right, guys, so what I have here is Visual Studio Code with an extension called Auto, Mar Auto Open Markdown Preview. So that's what I would suggest for writing Markdown. But of course, if you want to use another extension or another text editor with another extension or even something that is for Markdown, like MarkPad or whatever, it's absolutely fine. It doesn't really matter. But I really like this because it shows the preview on the side and it's it's um, it's you don't have to save it or anything it's really cool so we're gonna start off with um, with headings okay so I'm gonna put some comments in here just showing what we're doing we can use HTML style comments so for headings we use the number sign or pound sign hashtag whatever you want to call this and if we just do one that's gonna give us basically an h1 it's gonna give us the largest heading okay if we want to do an h2 we can do two. Whoops, let me close this up here. Hate these notifications. If we wanted to do three, we'll say heading three and four, five and six. Okay, so there's our headings. So very, very easy. Um, next thing we're going to look at is some emphasis. Let's look at italics. So italics, we can use, we can wrap whatever we want to italicize. Let's say this text is italic. So let's say we want to wrap this text in I, and make that italics. So we would use either asterisks, single asterisks like that so now you can see over here in the preview and on this side as well that you can see it's also italic um, or we can use underscores single underscores so we can go like that and that will also be italic all right now if we wanted to do strong if we wanted some strong text we could use double asterisks so that'll make it strong. We can also use double underscore and that will make it strong as well. Oops. All right, so next thing we'll look at is uh, strike through. So for strike through, we can use the tilde or double, um, yeah, double tilde. So we'll say this text double tilde is strike through. Okay, uh, let's do horizontal rule. So you can use this as like a separator. And for that we use triple, uh, what are these, hyphens, or we can use triple underscores. And it gives us these lines. So you can use these to kind of separate your, your content. Now one thing I want to mention is that if we actually wanted to display, like let's say we wanted to show the asterisks over here, next to this text we can escape these characters with a backslash so if I go like that now you can see this is no longer italicized and it's actually showing the the um, the asterisk so it works like just like in JavaScript if you if you wanted to escape um, a special character or something like that all right so let's see continuing continuing on let's look at block quotes so for a block quote, we use the greater than, we'll say this is a quote, and it just gives us, it gives you like a background and gives you this blue line on the side here, this border. Okay, links. So for a link, what we do is the text we wanna use for the link goes in brackets, and then for the link, that will go in parentheses. Okay, so now that's a link. And uh, if I wanted to have a title where if I hover over it, it'll show the title. What I could do is copy this 
and go to the end here still within the parentheses we'll put a space and then some quotes and whatever we want to use as the title so now if I hover over this now you'll see the title will be displayed so that's links let's move on to unordered lists and unordered lists are easy it's just one asterisk so for each item so let's do item one we'll say item two has to be a space there item three and so on and then if we wanted to have nested items we could just tab over put another asterisk and say nested item one nested item two all right and you can see the bullet is is uh, is different as well so if we wanted to do an ordered list we could do one dot we'll say item one and again one dot item two item three and over here you'll see that it's actually incrementing numbers so one two three and, and so on so very easy to create lists now if we wanted to create an inline code block oops we could use what are these back ticks we could use back ticks so for instance if I wanted to display like p tags we could go like that. All right, if we wanted to do, uh, let's see, an image, we could do, it's similar to, it's actually very similar to links, except we want to put an exclamation in front of our brackets, and let's say markdown logo and then in parentheses you want to put the location of the image which I'm going to use HTTPS and markdown dash here dot com slash IMG slash icon 256 dot PNG and that will actually display the image in the file okay so that's that's the basics of core markdown now github has kind of its own flavor of markdown so we're going to look at some of that stuff so we'll say uh, github markdown so for code blocks and if you guys have created repositories with with documentation you've probably done this before but we can use triple backticks so if we go like that and you might want to do like, you know, show them what they have to do to set up. So NPM install, NPM start, you might see something like that. And a lot of times you might see like bash right here or bash because you can specify um, syntax specific code blocks. So let's say we want to do something in JavaScript, we could do JavaScript and then in here let's do we'll just say function add and we'll say num1 num2 and return num1 plus num2 and it gives us special highlighting for JavaScript which is nice um, if we wanted to do let's say Python we could specify Python and of course this is not Python syntax we would do def so we want to define a function we'll do add and we don't want our curly braces we want to put a colon here get rid of that get rid of that and now we have our Python syntax alright so that's code blocks uh, we can also do tables and this I'm actually going to just paste in because it take me too long to type. And you'll see that this preview actually translates or converts it into this nice looking table, which is cool. Uh, another thing we can do is task lists, which should show up as like checkboxes on GitHub if you're using this as a as a README file. And and I'll show you that I'll I'll actually push this to a um, a repository. But for task lists, we would just do just like an unordered list, and then we put some brackets and an X, 
and say task one. So that would be like a task that's complete. And we'll do another one. And then let's do one that's not complete like that. So that's a task list. All right, so I think that's, that's about it. Um, what I'm gonna do now is actually push this to GitHub to see what it looks like on a, in a readme file. So it's called sample.md. I have it on my desktop. What I'm gonna do, let me just delete that. I'm gonna create a new folder called test you guys can do it can follow along if you want and then I'm gonna copy that whole file we just created and put it in here but I'm gonna rename it to readme all caps dot MD and then let's see I'll just grab something I don't know um, there's nothing in there we just grab this app.js file doesn't really matter just something and we'll put it in here and then I'm gonna open this folder up in git bash and let's initialize a git repository with git init and I have a I have an entire git tutorial git github tutorial uh, it's about 40 50 minutes long if you want to check that out but we're gonna do add dot which means add it all to the staging area then we're going to commit it I'm going to add the am flag and then just a comment I'll just say test so now we need a github repository so we'll go and head over to github okay and I'm just gonna go new repository I'll just call it test I'm gonna delete it right away and then I'm going to grab the remote command right here, git remote. We'll run that. And then we want to push to the remote repository, to the master branch. I don't have my um, SSH keys set up on this machine. Okay, so that should push and let's reload. And there we go. So there is all of our markdown. So you can see the little the code blocks we did. There's the table and, and the task list, which, which actually has checkboxes. Okay, so pretty cool. Now, if you wanted to see the HTML version of what we did, let's see. We could grab all this and there's actually converters online. So if we say markdown to HTML and paste that in and it gets converted and you can see all of the HTML with all the tags. All right, so hopefully this gave you a good idea of what Markdown is, what it's used for, and of course the syntax, which is very, very easy. Um, it, it's, it's really easy to remember. You may not remember it right away. You might have to look at the cheat sheet uh, a couple times, but um, you'll get it pretty quick. So I'll put a link in the description to that cheat sheet so you guys can get it and you can use it in the future if you want. Uh, but that's going to be it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Coding Dojo is a programming school that turns beginners into developers in only 14 weeks. If you're serious about landing a career in tech but lack the formal education or background, Coding Dojo will get you there in no time. With over 3,000 graduates to date, over 90% of their grads land jobs within three months of graduating, often making over 70 k per year at tech firms of all sizes, from companies like Google to local startups. To learn more, visit CodingDojo.com or click the link in the description below.